So yesterday I was carrying a casket at a funeral and today I'm out on a canoe trip with my son and my two good friends. Life is good. It's good to be out here and, uh, and uh, we're just starting out. We've just started paddling and we're going to be out here for 10 days. Hopefully going to catch some trout. Right buddy? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking forward to a good time. We got some more paddling to do tonight. There you go. We're going to have a good time and uh, stick with us for the rest of this video and uh, I think I might break this up into a few different uh, segments. Um, because we're going to have a lot of footage, so cheers. So we got in late last night. We had to pass a few campsites that were already taken, so we had to go further down the lake. We got here uh, just before dark. Enough time to set up our tents with some daylight and open our packs and get our sleeping bags out, that sort of thing. But these are the things you got to prepare for. First thing in the morning here, we're going to cut some firewood. It tracks them down. Normally in this park, there's a lot of uh, pine stands. So finding a small pine tree that's dead is pretty easy. Birch has a short lifespan, so you find it falling down all over the forest. But it generally doesn't burn well. It rots quick. But the birch bark is another story. It, uh, it's a great fire starter. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to grab some birch bark. Get my fire going, enjoy a breakfast by myself, because I'm the only one up for the first couple hours of any trip, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Don't ask me to stay up past dark, but I'm your guy in the morning. So this is birch bark here. Pull it off, and it's basically like paper. So this is great, great start fire. I grab a bunch of this. So that's like having a sheet of paper in your hands. Don't necessarily want to split my firewood near the water, but this is a nice solid log and there's really not any other options close on the campsite. So uh, this will do. And it's a nice morning and the sun's looking over the lake, so it's a good thing. So now that I got my fire prepped, I cut down about three, three or four small little trees that I found, cut them up, did my splitting so they're ready to go. So the bigger pieces of wood, lots of birch bark here. So I'm going to show you how that burns. Goes up pretty quick. Nice little pad for kindling here. When the weather cooperates and we have time, we're going to cook all our meals over the fire. I got my jet boil in case we need it. Last night we uh, fired up some boiling water with the jet boil because uh, we were running late and it was dark and uh, we had a million things to do so it's a perfect example of why I bring it. So when packing a trip like this, every day gets his own Ziploc bag. So in this Ziploc bag is our food for the day. So Saturday, May 12th. I know that uh, we don't overindulge on M&Ms and that sort of thing, right? So in here, for me and Griff, is our oatmeal, our trail mix for the day, different snacks, um, even dinner. Um, tonight, actually, we're going to be having uh, some frozen chili that should be thawed out. So I just have some uh, flatbread, um, but tea bags, chocolate bars, 
pepperonis, a little bit of salami for breakfast. I like that with my oatmeal. And um, so literally I, I go into my food bag for the whole trip and I look for, and I stack them so that the last one I'm gonna need is at the bottom of the bag. So I reach in this morning, Saturday, May 12th is sitting on top and there we go for the day. I'll keep this in the canoe and have uh, our snacks available as we're paddling throughout the day. So breakfast for today, this is my oatmeal. Said here, this is actually grits because there's chocolate chips in there. <laughs> Griffey likes his chocolate chips in his oatmeal. Actually I do too, some of my like dark chocolate. Let's see here. So for my, uh, if I'm taking two people, you've seen my solo kit, this is my uh, two person kit. So I have the Jet Boil, the Snow Peak 1400 that I'm boiling my water in and I'll do my oatmeal in here and a tea in here. I know this is getting real particular, but chocolate chips on the side, oatmeal with some hemp hearts, uh, chopped almonds, chopped dates, and uh, th so three packs in here. I eat a lot. I'm skinny, but I eat a lot. <clears throat> okay, oatmeal in there. I put the chocolate chips in after I put the water in, once the oatmeal absorbs. I'm a coffee drinker, but I also like tea. I drink my tea black, which makes it easier to drink out here camping. So one tea bag in there. And to mix it up, because we have a lot of carbs, um, you can buy salamis that don't require refrigeration. So buy one of these and uh, we'll cut into it this morning and uh, we'll mix that up a little bit. <clears throat> so a little bit of oatmeal, salami, tea. That's breakfast. Because <clears throat> we, we got a long travel day today, a lot of paddling. So last night was a perfect example of why you have to have your stove handy at all times. I like to keep it in the top pack here so that uh, if we ever need it right away, either quick shore lunch or last night, for example, when we came in here at 8 o'clock and it was dark, um, be able to whip it out, throw it out, um, boil some water quickly, have a quick meal and get in, crawl in the sleep bags because we were all cold and tired. All right, we're getting ready to head out for our second day. I just wanted to go over some of the things that... Uh, I pack for this trip or how I pack for this trip I guess I should say so me and Griff gone for 10 days this is everything that we have in four packs that's um, at times a little excessive depending on what you're bringing and that sort of thing I could certainly uh, reduce this the green pack here has most of my camera gear and that sort of stuff so we could easily reduce this down to three packs but again this is a uh, two portage trip we got some luxury items with us but one of the things I wanted to point out was just a couple of things with the weight. So my son Griff, he weighs about 105 pounds. His two packs there are about 25 pounds each. To me, that's a good weight where he can do portages. I think today we got one that's about 800 meters. So he'll have no problem carrying that weight. So he's got those two packs. This here is my pack. It's uh, all the heavy items in there are food, that sort of stuff. So this one comes in around 60 pounds and um, I'll carry that when I'm not carrying the canoe. This is my incidental backpack and I got um, my camera gear in there and a few odds and ends. So it's fairly light, comes in under 30 and I'll carry this with the canoe. So two portages. Big thing I like to point out to people is no loose items hanging off the backpacks. When you get to a portage you can waste a lot of time just getting in there and all the little things floating at the bottom of your canoe. We get out of our canoe, we grab our packs and we go and uh, we have five or six portages to do today so that's kind of important where you can really waste a lot of time doing that. As it is, we're doing double carry, so that takes enough time up as it is. And again, that's my kayak paddle with all our fishing gear. So besides that, life jackets and our canoe paddles, that's all we need. And we're ready to go when we hit the portage. So on this trip, me and Griff uh, brought our paddles that we made at uh, Lee Valley. So we've been using them all day yesterday. Um, today, I'm gonna let Griffy try to do some fishing and um, also, we got, we got a lot of distance to cover, so I'm going to take out the, my kayak paddle. So I wanted to show you a setup I have here and uh, why I bring this bag. So the kayak paddle is nice to, uh, you got to realize I'm keeping up with two grown men paddling a canoe. And uh, Griff does his best, but you know, we fall behind a little bit, right? So especially if I let him try to do some fishing, uh, I'm going to use the kayak paddle today. And another nice thing here is, this is what I'm going to use as a rod holder. And I'll get into it when I put it on my canoe. But basically I'm going to use these gear ties and this is going to go across the yoke of the boat right in the middle and we are going to hang our fishing rods actually I've used it also 
to protect my fishing rods. But once we, once we get settled and we start doing some trolling, this is going to be tied to the yoke and the fishing rods will go in here. And these little gear ties, these will clamp against the bail of the fishing reel so that they don't uh, slide out. So I think it's going to work pretty good. So we're going to have two rods hanging off in different directions that keep the lure spaced out nice. So anyways, that's what I have in here. Fishing rods. I've gone over, these are tarp poles I bring on every trip if I can. I mean, I could live without them. If I go solo, I really need to pack light. Uh, plane coming over. I really need to pack light, I don't bring them. But they're kind of a luxury on this trip. We're doing double portages, so. I got these at REI, they're really good quality, light. Um, can't see enough good things about them. And uh, this is my kayak paddle. Just gonna be using this today. And uh, also, actually, I got a nice uh, fish net. So the net comes off and it actually fits in one of our backpacks and this is the expandable um, handle for it. So hopefully uh, you can't let your son lose his big uh, lake trout, right? So if Griffey uh, lands a nice big uh, lake trout, I want to make sure we don't lose it. So I brought a fishing net this trip. And one thing I never brought in on a camping trip before in my life is uh, an umbrella. And to be honest with you, the main reason I brought this is because uh, doing a lot more video and photography. Um, if it's raining, I'd, I had some ideas on some of the video I wanted to get in the rain and I was thinking of ways to protect my camera and I thought, you know what, I'm going to bring an umbrella. So there you go, quickly uh, some of the things I have in here. Bites. Now we just started uh, fishing. I got my kayak paddle going, so I let Griff throw a line out. It's an absolutely gorgeous day, as you can see, but no bites yet. There we go. If you were wondering if the water was cold, that's a piece of ice floating in the lake. So, yeah, this is May 12th, and there's chunks of ice floating in Burnt Island Lake. Just slow, buddy. Laker or brookie? Uh, I don't know. It's not that big enough. Oh, nice, uh, nice lake trout. Griffey, over here, buddy. Oh, it's okay. Nice, nice lake trout. Oh, there we go. Ha yeah. <laughs> ha. Griffey's first lake trout. Oh. Woohoo! That's a bit of a beauty. <laughs> All right. Now that's a laker? That's a laker, buddy. Hold on for a sec. Hold on. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's a really... Awesome, buddy. It's a nice fish. Very, very nice. That's Griffin's... Uh, we were, we've been fishing about 10 minutes. We're out in a big lake in northern Ontario. 